Okay, so here we are looking at the hair mold pattern. If you are uh, wondering what it looks like, if you're not familiar with it, this is what the pattern looks like. Um, but this is not necessarily uh, centered within this particular frame. Um, and we're going to get into discussing uh, what center means. And I know that because it cuts on this side, I'm not going to do the same thing, cuts on this side. But yet, yeah, I just wanted to show you just for. Uh, you know, uh, simplicity and just to kind of see what this pattern it looks like. And it's basically, um, you can use subway tiles, ceramic tiles, and uh, they need to be in a rectangular shape. Um, and you lay them out um, in a kind of a 45 degree angle to one another. So as you can see, this can be one tile and it is positioned at a 45 degree angle um, to to the left and then this tile is positioned 45 degrees to the right and when they meet they create this kind of this L shape and then you basically create this L shape stacked one after another on top of each other and that's how the um, in, uh, installer basically uh, thinks about the the layout and then install but um, if you're designing a space and then your concern needs to be on, um, you know, pr preparing the space so that, so that the installer, when they come, they come in, they're going to be able to execute this pattern properly. And um, so here we're going to talk about some of those things. Okay, so here we are looking at a uh, shower. And uh, in this uh, little demonstration, I'm modeling the hair and bone pattern in uh, various showers and spaces that you're gonna see in a second. But here we're looking at uh, a shower uh, that has two walls done in the hair and bone pattern. And I wanna talk about when you're, you know, when you're designing uh, a shower with the hair and bone pattern, what sort of things to look for so that it comes out looking good. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of zoom in here. Um, and right off the bat, one of the most important things that you need to do is uh, make sure that the walls are plumb and square. Because if you look at the corner of the shower, you can see these little cut pieces. They're all, um, and they might be different size depending on how the layout is done. And by far, this is, I, I, I've done this layout on purpose in a second. I'll explain to you why I've done it this way. So because I want to point out a few things to you, but you can see this particular uh, shower is plumb and see all these pieces at the corner of the shower are all the same size. If your walls are not plumb, these pieces are going to either increase or decrease in size. And that's not going to look very good. Um, the, the thing I want to mention is the position of uh, the pattern with respect to uh, the adjacent wall. So uh, when you're when you're doing one wall and you know you want to be continuing that pattern, as you can see here, the tile is sort of like bent in a way. It's kind of like a book match. Uh, and that pattern continues on so that if you were to lay this these two walls flat on the uh, ground or wall uh, you would not notice that there was any um, uh, you know seam or, or kind of a bent in the middle so so you really want to make sure that you um, you count for that when you're designing this uh, this pattern that the pattern flows and continues you don't want to see a completely new pattern starting on the other wall versus the other wall uh, the, the wall beside it okay that's not going to look very good um the other thing is is are the cuts at the end of the uh, at the edges so you have two edges here where the tiles terminate and you can see the cuts here are small triangles versus this cut here this is going to depend on uh you the position of the, the size of the shower uh, and also the sh size of each wall. Obviously, if one wall is bigger than the other, you're not going to meet that no matter what you do. But um, in this 
that's why I made it like this so you kind of see what could happen so perhaps what an idea would be to try to make both walls the same size so the cuts you see on one side are going to be the exact same size as the cuts on the other side the other thing about plumbness of the walls that's so important is that if it's not plumb or if you have let's say a bows uh, or, or you know a curvature along the surface of the, the wall you're gonna have the joints between these tiles opening up and what that's gonna do is you're gonna get really large grout size uh, grout joints in between because there's so many grout joints between these tiles that it's very easy to go off your uh, your center line it's very easy to see the tile the, the gaps between the tiles opening up so again very important that is plumb and also the walls are flat as well the other thing you want to also consider when laying out this particular pattern is that the ceiling is also plumb because if again if the ceiling is not plumb see all these cuts that are up at the ceiling there they're all going to be a different size as they run along the, the ceiling so that's what you don't want either so this is why you get a lot of preparation that goes to you know creating this pattern um, and also on these the, the ground floor as well uh, speaking of these two edges you also want to make sure that you plan out what the cuts are going to look like at the very top and very bottom as well so that you don't have um, uh, you know very small sliver type of pieces like triangle especially in this case would be like triangle pieces that would be trying you trying to fit in you know between the tiles just to fill the gaps and sometimes it might be too small and you have to fill it with grout and that may not look very good so um, you know balancing out the pattern uh, between uh, the ceiling and the floor is also something that's quite important as well um, and the other thing is, uh, you know, in this particular situation, uh, the, the pattern uses the same tile, but, uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, designs that are out there that utilize different colors. So you could have, let's say a white, a gray, and a black, and it can kind of flow, um, along the uh, surface of the wall and it kind of look like it's kind of flowing up and that can look really nice as well so that's another thing that you could be doing um, in this pattern so this is a real life example of what i mean by that kind of flowing effect um, utilizing three different color tiles uh, this is uh, uh, you know, work done by a Rich Smith uh, from Rich Smith Enterprises uh, in uh, Florida, uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Uh, and he's uh, kindly give us uh, a uh, photo of uh, his recent project. And uh, as you can see, um, you know, all the things that I described uh, is done um, in, with precision. You know, we have uh, the, the cuts flowing, um, in a way that it's book matched and, and you can kind of see how this pattern is kind of laid out with the three different tiles and kind of blends together really nicely so uh this is something that you can you know definitely incorporate in one of your designs it can be within a niche it can be within uh an entire uh you know uh, surface of of the shower the walls um but it can really make the shower look amazing so moving on i want to show you this shower now now this was done with uh we got thin porcelain panels on each wall we got mosaic on the floor and then in this case we threw in a mosaic sorry not a mosaic uh the hair and bone pattern in the middle so we're not trying to really create a very busy look like in this situation here we're trying to kind of give it a feature wall. So we're utilizing the hair and wall pattern as a feature in this shower. So that's one other way to utilize the hair and bone pattern. A um, couple things very important in this situation is, um, you know, you want to make sure that you center the pattern 
uh, right in the middle of the niche so that the cuts that are on this side are going to be the same as the cuts on the other side. Um, this particular application, I'm, I'm looking at it from the side. I can't really move to the side, but um, uh, I will uh, show a picture right now so you can kind of see how that's balanced between the two edges. Um, now, you can't really find a prefabricated uh, shower niche that is going to be the length of the entire length of the back wall, which is typically like around six, 60 inches or so. Um, but you can build this. So you typically will build this out of two by four framing. And uh, you want to make sure that, again, these are plumb, uh, sorry, they're, they're level and on both, both the top and the bottom so that you do not get different size cuts along the um, as, as the pattern continues along the niche um, as you can see uh, one of the nice things about utilizing a feature uh, in the niche like this is that you can actually bring in the color on the rest of the shower inside the niche so in this case we are grouting the joints with uh, with a black grout and what that does is is it blends everything together and uh, so it doesn't kind of pop out and uh, you know make it look like it maybe doesn't belong there um, but that that's just sort of another usage of this uh, herringbone pattern that's quite interesting and it can make the uh, bring a kind of feature uh, uh, thing to, to the entire shower uh, that would otherwise be quite plain as you can see you know these slab pieces are quite plain uh, relative to for instance the herringbone pattern um, moving on to this shower um, here's another way that we can utilize the herringbone pattern again keeping in mind we need to be centered so that the cuts on both sides are going to be exactly the same so we don't see this uh, this size piece uh, on one side and the other side um, and um, you know utilizing inside a niche now s s you could probably just do the entire pattern in this and then stick the um, shelving unit afterwards uh, but if you are installing the shelf in between the, the, the tiles then you need to make sure that you continue that same pattern as it flows to the bottom portion of the shelf um, and uh, in this situation, you would probably find a prefabricated niche that would fit a size uh, that, you know, a typical niche size. And those would be very good because they already come in um, nice and plumb level and they would not you know, need any more work. You just kind of install those and it would be easier to uh, complete the herringbone pattern in those, um, with those uh, prefabricated niches. Um, the thing you want to also consider is let's say in, in this situation you want to do the floor in the herringbone pattern as well you might want to continue because typically a lot of times we might take the floor tile and we would um, basically uh, throw it the, the same pattern on into the niche as well so uh, one thing you want to keep in mind is that the uh, pattern that you that the center of this floor uh, uh, herringbone pattern should line up with the center of the pattern in the niche um, otherwise you would still have a, you know a bit of a mismatch between the two and what that means is that you want to make sure that your niche is centered to the drain if you're going to let's say center the drain then you want to throw a laser on that drain and make sure that your niche is dead center um, um, you know get split right in half so that you can then continue the same pattern all throughout the entire niche and also on the floor as well um, so there is this is typically the way the hair and bone pattern is laid out it's actually the most nicest way uh, in my opinion this is another way that you could this is sort of like a, a sideways version of it it's still a hair and bone pattern but as you can see it's sort of laid on its side as you can see, one of the challenges of it is that you do you, because you have to uh, cut the tiles at a certain um, you know position as as you're you know laying out the, the, the pattern, you may experience some some uh, slivers here and there because you know as the pattern continues. So uh, it's not the most desirable looking 
um, layout in terms of the herringbone. Um, but uh, it, it is done. But in the most popular design is this kind of layout, like this. And it kind of creates a very aesthetic look.